physiological way uh, to, to a physiological form of nystagmus is called optokinetic nystagmus, and this is this is a sign of health. Um, and and what happens in optokinetic nystagmus is that one sees a repeated pattern. Think about being on a, a, a bus or a train as you as you follow a forest or a or a, a fence, uh, say a picket fence, and what you see is a is a repeated pattern and you keep on following it, but then your eyes have to reset because uh, you come to the end of your orbit, and then you do this again. And what you can see is that you will do this, this optokinetic following, following followed by the, a, a saccade reset, an optokinetic following, saccade reset, and so on. Now, you can elicit this in the clinic by one of two methods. One is you can have a fancy rotating drum that either rotates uh, in the yaw plane or rotates in this plane. You can get optokinetic nystagmus in any direction. Um, I've also seen uh, a, a clever colleague of mine has just a sock that has a lot of black and white stripes and he just, he just moves it across somebody's visual field and they get an optokinetic nystagmus. Now this is a sign of health. Um, and uh, it, it's a good thing. And I should say at this point that a, a pathological form of nystagmus can be the result of a lesion in a wide, wide variety of places. So fundamentally, it can be a, a, the result of a lesion in the periphery. We saw the example that we used was um, uh, a loss of a whole labyrinth. Um, or it can be the result of a, a particular uh, lesion within the central nervous system. And the, the number of places in the central nervous system that can uh, yield a nystagmus are, in fact, staggering. Um, and we won't, we, I, I can't go into them because I, I can't explain the majority of them. But there are a few ways that you can, uh, you can bias your, your guess um, intelligently towards a peripheral source or towards um, a, a uh, um, central source. And so one of, the, one of them is to see whether the nystagmus um, is accompanied by hearing loss or tinnitus. If it's accompanied by hearing loss or tinnitus, the problem is probably peripheral, right? The problem is probably coming from this shared inner ear issue. There's something going wrong in the inner ear. Another uh, uh, um, feature that will bias uh, the guest towards a peripheral source is if the nystagmus is, um, is uh, accompanied by vertigo. So as you can imagine, the coupling of vertigo to nystagmus uh, is automatic with a peripheral lesion. But centrally, you might have a problem that is more motor in, in, uh, in source. And so in that situation, you wouldn't have a, a sensory disturbance that would accompany the, the, the nystagmus. Um, one final easy one to remember, I think, is that uh, horizontal nystagmus can be peripheral or can be central, whereas vertical and torsional uh, nystagmus is almost always central. Okay. So now we're going to go on and we're going to move to uh, saccade. So we're moving from uh, types of eye movements that stabilize gaze to the major type of eye movement that allows us to switch our gaze.